Welcome back. More than 100 million Americans suffer from chronic, long-lasting pain. And tonight, new guidelines released out of Southern Oregon hope to change the way doctors treat those patients. It's a response to what's become a pain pill epidemic, causing dozens of deadly overdoses here in Southern Oregon every year. NBC5 first introduced you to the work of the Southern Oregon Opioid Prescribers Group last night at 6. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at how those guidelines are designed to work. I'm not going to be a passenger in my life anymore. Sometimes talking can lead to healing. You haven't gotten rid of the pain. No. Right? No, and so, so... But when the pain is physical, it can be harder to see how a hearing ear can help. That moment of clarity came with kind of the education piece of that you don't need to live your life like this. You can live your life in a different way. Ten years ago, Michelle Maricos took a fall off a second story porch. She broke three vertebrae. Her injuries permanent and painful. It's never going to go away. These pills aren't helping. I need to take more pills. She spent the next ten years addicted to a cocktail of opioid prescriptions, an addiction that left her in more pain than the injury itself. You start having anxiety about running out of your medication, about losing your medication, about people's perception of you being on the medication. Hers is a situation far too common in Jackson County, and pain pill overdoses are costing dozens of Southern Oregonians their lives each year. This is a public health emergency that we're dealing with. In response to that emergency, Jackson County Health Director Jim Shames helped create the Southern Oregon Opioid Prescribers Group, and their work is extensive. They've just released this book of guidelines intended to steer doctors away from treating patients with pills. Shame says it's not going to be an easy sell. You have decades of physicians and, and other prescribers being told a certain message. And now we're trying to say, oh, well, wait a minute. We didn't, we didn't really mean that. So what exactly do they mean? Well, research the group compiled shows non-opioid treatment can be more effective than pills. Physical fitness can ease pain by up to 60% and cognitive behavioral therapy by up to 50%. In some ways, it's sort of a reprogramming about, um, about being with pain and how you're sort of interpreting that. Clinical social worker Laura Hesacker says learning how to live with pain can actually ease it. I see people being hugely successful. Marikos, who got clean in July, says it's worked for her. The concept was to taper off of our medications and to learn how to use skills versus the pills. The guidelines don't rule out opiates altogether, but advise doctors not to prescribe on the first visit and only after a urinalysis, checking for drug use, and a signed agreement that a patient knows the risks. Central Point Dr. Brandon Hall says following the guidelines takes time, but he believes they're worthwhile. And as everybody raises that our standard of care, um, patients get the message and we appropriately find those people who are having trouble with addiction. Maricos is now trying to form a group for Southern Oregonians living with chronic pain so she and others can share their pain because after all talking can lead to healing. We're all in the same situation and we're all trying to get to an end point of where we're living our lives again. In Washington state in 2010, lawmakers passed legislation mandating doctors follow certain laws when treating chronic pain, and statistics show that significantly reduced the amount of pain pills being prescribed. No talk of legislation like that here in Oregon. And Michelle Maricos, who wants to start that support group for other people who are dealing with chronic pain, will have her information on our website for anyone who might be interested. Absolutely. It sounds like, yes, as they talk about, talking leads to healing. Yeah, we hope so.